good afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you are, everyone. It's Tom Sydney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from Side Club. And I've got Megan Rose with me. And me and Megan, we got to, we might talk about it a little bit in the video, but we got to meet each other just a few weeks ago before I came back. And uh, and we also have Janine with us, who I got to meet as well, as people will know. So how are both of you ladies? Good. I'm good. Thanks, Tom. Excellent. Well, welcome to the show. Um, Janine, how, so a bit of housekeeping. We'll do it at the end as well. But how can people find you? Uh, the TBJ and use the long term of that uh, dot yep. com. That's the website. Okay. And then the Beyond Mystic Academy. I've got uh, two sets of lessons there. Uh, each of them have many hours of uh, lessons. So there's level one and level two tarot lessons. So. Excellent. Excellent. So go over to Janine's uh, website, sign up. It's a, it's a great show with all her content. And um, Megan, how can people find you? I was going to say, we can't even say TBJ on YouTube anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> what, Serious? Like, what a, like what a compliment, you know? Yeah. It's but hilarious. You can, I know you can find me Megan Rose on YouTube. And then I also have a Patreon channel where I do live readings and meditations and I'm Megan Rose medium on there. Excellent. Thanks, ladies. And uh, of course, we've got the Tom Numbers show here on YouTube and also my other channel, Site Club. And then all the various ones will have all the links below on Telegram and Rumble, et cetera. Twitter as well. Twitter's getting a bit more active. So, all righty. Well, I wanted to kick off the show. <clears throat> I have a question that I wanted uh, the cast to have a look at, Janine, if we could. And it's something that came, I've seen it before, but someone put it in a format that was interesting. It was an interesting question. So you may have seen this. But there's a picture of Eddie Murphy and there's another picture of what looks like Eddie Murphy from maybe 100 plus years ago, kind of a black and white sepia photograph. Oh. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, there's a few others. I think there's a Nicolas Cage one. But basically, I'd never had this thought because of what the content, the, the description they put below. They basically said, was Eddie Murphy part of the Titanic that went down, the old one, like the, the kind of the old picture? And is it are people from the Titanic coming back to... Um, I guess, helping this ascension process, the awakening. And I'd never thought that, but I thought it was a fascinating question. So I wanted to see what the cards may think on that. So we're specifically asking if that's, uh, if that's what it's showing, that these people are coming back who were on yes. the Titanic. Okay. Yes, yeah. Things get more interesting every minute, really. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, isn't that interesting? Uh, I'd say yes with those big major arcanas and also this trumpeter. So this yeah. is like the judgment card that's like it could be shocking and or a shocking wake up call. And then the world. Yeah. So everything's, uh, you know, exposed and but in a safe way. Okay, so it's been waiting to expose it is what I get from that. And of course, it's okay. not going to be well known right away because that's in the now. So that's okay. people are going to be in in cognitive dissidence or whatever that word is. And then we've got the three of swords. I think we're going to see a lot of people who thought to be gone or back or um, in lots of different ways. Right. Not just uh, reincarnated, but. Lots of different ways. Some people even falsifying how they left. I think a lot of people you uh, lamented were gone or whatever could come back like that. I don't know why it just threw that in <laughs> right at the end. But so was that a was that Eddie Murphy, the old picture supposedly from the Titanic? Was that um, was that Eddie Murphy either as a, a copy? a double or a reincarnation was it him was well, it him his image th this is interesting so this is like a resistance it's not quite time to say yes to that <laughs> okay that answers <laughs> it right there i think it's a yes because yeah. of that other layout okay. but uh yeah. i think they're gonna wait to it i don't know it feels like we're gonna get, there's more to it is what i get and you have to know the whole way it works so I, I okay. think this time frame, I think the way time works doesn't work the way we thought it did. And that's all going to be revealed. And I feel like you need that explanation to mm. really, in a wide sense, understand that. And that's why it's uh, the cards are working like that. 
Okay. Thank you. Very cool. That's amazing. Though. Like, I'd never thought of it like that in, re in relation to the Titanic. Um, but that's, yeah, that's very cool. Megan? I was going to say, like, I think one of the, re you know, trying to decipher who's like a clone and who's not drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was going to say one of the reasons why the Cabal uses clones, like remove the original person and replace with a clone is because they're easier to control, like mind control, because there's no soul there. And so they're easy. There's no conscience. There's nothing saying, oh, maybe what I'm doing is wrong, or maybe I'm committing a crime, or maybe I want to go off and do something else. It's they are presenting an image, an idol, a total program that is completely mind controlled. The subconscious is completely controlled. And that's how they control us and sway, you know, use propaganda and make them do their little dances in Hollywood. And that's how they control the population. But I know that's one of the reasons in using a clone, but also, of course, it can be maybe that person was executed by the good guys and then they have to replace it. But um, but I know that's that's one of the reasons is it's easier to control their mind. Interesting. It's interesting as well, the thing of consciousness, because um, I did a course before 2020 and um, it was a spiritual course it's called site k so i that's how i kind of originated my name site club i didn't want to do the same name but i i liked fight club the film which is ata actually which is trump which i didn't know at the time but um they talk about doing surrogation work and how consciousness can move into other beings in a good way so i understood that that principle existed but then i it kind of prepared me for the possibility of things like clones because i you know i've seen them in sci-fi but i didn't believe that's possible but then i was like okay so there's interest in the timing. I did that in the summer of 2019, created my channel name in October 2019, didn't do anything with it until May of 2020. Um, I was like, I just need to say something. I'll just use the channel that I've created, but I didn't everything. But then later on, I figured out that Site Club equaled 109, which equals 17. Diana Spencer, Zapruder, all those things, you know, and consciousness comes from 175, which is Diana Francis Spencer. So it was, um, it all seemed to, you know, meant to be. Um, but yeah, that whole thing of consciousness. So this is an interesting one. When you say it drives you mad trying to figure it out, it, it does me as well. But there's a newspaper here. Well, there's a few newspapers, but one in particular here in England called The Star, or Daily Star. And Daily Star's 109, 17, Site Club, Zapruder, Diana Spencer, etc. But it always put things in memes. So it's kind of the most disbelievable newspaper. I've spoken, I think, with Janine about this before, but this newspaper kind of does cartoony things. And they've been putting stuff out for ages about Matt Hancock and Boris Johnson and a few other people being clowns. So they call them Bozo the Clown or Coco the Clown. But if you spell the word clown, C-L-O-W-N, phonetically, it's clone. It's C-L-O-W-N, clone, clone. Clown is clone. But we pronounce it clown, but it's actually clone. And they were putting that out, and I was like, okay, maybe. I am. Um, I I just made a YouTube video on this. Like when you activate the soul part of you, you start to notice that your mind is like the ego brain is telling stories to yourself. Like, and that's why we have television, which is television. And then we learn to tell ourselves a vision and it's, it's just the ego brain. It's the physical brain. It has nothing to do with the soul. Like the soul is an observer. So if you remove, and a lot of people tell themselves stories about who they are and they like believe their own bullshit, <laughs> you know? And, um, and so if you remove that soul, if you remove the observer, you're completely controlled by the ego brain, by your subconscious. And there's nothing there that is telling you you're wrong. And that's why they make fabulous liars because maybe they don't even really know they're lying. They're just a puppet that is, believing what's projected into their mind you know can we have a look janine at kind of the percentage of clones or doubles that exist in the realm in the on the earth right now right is it I wonder if we let's, could find out kind of percentage let's uh, narrow it down to do you want to talk about the clones or doubles because i think those are different so okay, let's yeah, literally just point. say yeah. uh, clones Let's yeah. look at clones, yeah, and then maybe we'll look at doubles afterwards, yeah. Okay. 
because I think they could like uh, some some people say they clone them many times. Like there's been lots of people whistleblowing on these cloning centers and they like Kevin Hart even said he had like something like three or seven. I can't remember different times in different interviews. He spilled the beans or maybe he just said it that they had, he had several, that's why he's everywhere. Somebody said you're everywhere and you're in every film. How does that happen? He goes, well, you got uh, seven clones of me. Why, you know, that's easy. (laughs) You know what I mean? The seven dwarfs, yeah. <clears throat> the seven Kevin Hart dwarfs. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, Tom and I had a great time when you came, we met in Baltimore. That was fun. That was. Do you want to tell them about the curve and the wheel? Oh, God. <laughs> so I, I, got, I got a brand new Jeep. And so it's amazing. Could- it's a Jeep. Before white Jeep, it's a, it's a it's a thing of beauty. It's amazing, yeah. Thank right you. On. And uh, I have many talents, but driving isn't one of them. <laughs> and so <laughs> we were on our way to the restaurant, and I made it was it was technically an illegal turn, so the turn was like ninety degrees, and I oh, hit I hit <laughs> I hit a curb. It was really a good thing the car is so big because I, <laughs> I could have definitely popped a tire, but <laughs> it would have taken the wheel off. Any other normal kind of immortal car would have had. It was like. I thought because it it did look tight. I was like, "Is she gonna?" Like, oh no, she did. And then, and it was right at the back end. It was right back on the right. Bang! I was like, "Whoa!" Well, my better friend just went, and, you know. <laughs> and we just trundled along and joked about it. But thankfully, there was no damage yeah. to the car. I think the curb got came off worse than the, the when the tire. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, it was so funny. Okay, sorry, Janine. Go ahead. That's okay. <laughs> I think it's going to be shocking to know how many clones. I think there's way more than we thought. I can't even believe these cards. I think there's way more. Uh, and see, we got this two in the background. Uh, so it's it used to be 50-50, but I feel like it's changed. And we got maybe a 60% real humans and 40% clones. So we got a whole lot of clones Wow. That is just weird. I wonder if clones actually represent those P, what are those they call them? The NPCs. People, M, NPCs. Yeah, yeah so non-player non-players. Players. I wonder if that's what they are. I wonder if that's what we're talking about here. Because it looks like there's a whole lot of them. And this is the outcome. It's going to be shocking to know how many. It's going to be hard to explain to people. And this is going to be, if you think, all that other stuff's going to be hard to tell the normies. Wait till they hear this. Yeah. Well, they don't <laughs> need that soul. Sometimes they can put a soul in a clone, but I don't think the deep state does that because I think the whole point of it is moving is removing that Christ-like energy. So a lot of them can't carry that frequency of love that heals the planet, you know? And so uh, I think it would be necessary for a lot of us to understand these things because it's part of realizing that we're actually special. And I've posted this on Telegram before. Like if you were born with a soul, like you're good. (laughs) You got it. You have everything you need to make it through the great awakening. Like you brought it all with you. That's exactly what you need is, is the soul, the power of the soul. That's where all the information is anyways. You know, these, uh, so truly intuitive, truly psychic people, will always have that divine connection, a soul to be able to connect to that higher energy. So I wonder if this explains how many sleepers there are that you just can't wake up. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. In an effort to control the masses or to mind control a massive amount of people, it makes sense to create more people to um, support a certain agenda. You know, Yeah. it's like if, a million people support Joe Schmo. It looks better, or if it looks more authentic, that's kind of how their deep state disinfo operations work, you know. Wow. And then we have, Trump, we have Trump on the other side, and he's just one of them. And then he's being attacked by all of the people who are employed or controlled mm-hmm. through this through technology. Wow. You said Christ-like energy there, Megan. I just looked at the numbers on that. So Christ-like energy is 188. That comes to President um, Kennedy. It comes to Close Encounters. comes to um, 
Jesus of Nazareth, and it also comes to the coronavirus. So I've always been saying this for a while that when they, you know, broadcast that out, the coronavirus, and it's okay to talk about it now, I think, because, um, you know, everyone has talked, and they changed the name, they called it COVID in the end, but um, I think that, and it's also, um, <clears throat> even things like coronavirus, a 155, the millennium, um, the thousand years of peace. So I, it was when they declared it, as with a trumpet, I believe, it, you know, it was like this kind of shot around the world, everyone knew about it. I thought it was the double meaning on the numbers. It was like it was one thing, but it was also declaring something else. Um, and the Christ-like energy is 188, um, which is Jesus of Nazareth, which is uh, um, John F. Kennedy, well, President Kennedy. And people, some people don't believe in Jesus, at all, but the Christ-like energy, you know, I think that's kind of a thing that connects pretty much most of us in the movement. Um, Janine, that was shocking what you said about the clones. <laughs> can we look at it a little bit further? Can we ask, can we see if we can find out what's going to happen to the clones in time? Will they kind of just, will they be given the chance at a soul or will they just kind of switch off and kind of just go? Will they, you know, break down, shut down? Will they just kind of be gone? What will happen? So the way to recognize the clones are they're the least likely to believe the stories about uh, the dark cult um, ruling the world. They're completely oblivious to uh, the dumbs, the tunnels. Uh, they just can't hear it. Uh, they just won't. They're not programmed to uh, think, uh, see any of that. So they just don't see the evil in the world. They'll, they'll act completely oblivious. So those, that's your way to... Uh, and unfortunately, I got to be honest, I got some family members like that who can't even, won't even, it's like, mm. so you're fit, <clears throat> look around your family people. Sorry. It's like, what? How does that? I don't know how, I don't know how this works, but anyway, I'm just saying, wow. Okay. So uh, we've got this ace in the middle. So we've got this yeah. big ace in the middle. Uh, I feel like they'll, they will get an opportunity to actually come online with a soul. Ah, nice. That's Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And I don't know exactly how they'll that'll happen, but that's what that looks like. Wow. Yeah. And it's um uh that's a spiritual secretive card. Okay. It's already huh. happening that a lot of them have been um uh have these infant souls and they'll feel like so it's already starting to happen which is maybe why the numbers went down even in that last reading i did so it started out at about half and half and now now it's starting to be where there's less of them okay so i feel like secretly or in secret there's a secret program uh that does uh place soul essences in them and they're infant souls so it doesn't mean they behave infantile but they might be spiritually really not so evolved so i've i read for years and you could always tell the old souls who'd been many lifetimes with the soul and or living incarnations and then there's these new souls new souls are very interesting bunch uh they haven't really they don't have the memory of all the lifetimes of learning and so they're sort of naive and um it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. I know lots of young souls, new souls. They just have a lot to learn. They'll have a lot to learn. So the old souls will still be teaching the young souls, it looks like. I think also, like, there's always a choice. Like, evolution is your own choice. So there's some souls who are like, I want to learn everything I can in every lifetime. And then you tend to see sometimes people or souls who are more comfortable or choose to not evolve or not evolve as fast in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I think that also can be the case too. Yeah. You know, some, some souls are like overachievers, like I'm going here, I'm going to yeah. learn everything I can. I'm going to keep yeah. coming back. And then some people just get, you know, some souls are like, nope, not this lifetime. You know, and like, I see that in my family members too. Like they'll refuse to see certain things. They don't want to learn the lesson. They yeah. keep going over and over True. and over. So it's, a I can never, un I can never understand that mentality. Cause I love the lessons. It's like, yeah. bring it on. I just <laughs> I love it. So exciting. <laughs> I find it very exciting and I'm not afraid of any of it. Uh, I feel really good about it, but uh, I know a lot of people are so fearful of those lessons and, 
they just can't wrap their mind around it. But uh, as we evolve, we'll get more comfortable with how it works. <laughs> you know, if we keep doing this, I think things will change though, you guys, like uh, I'm not saying overnight or anything, but in the next few years over to even 10 years uh, from now, I think things will have really changed where uh, there isn't the resistance. I, f I feel like that because uh, this dark energy that's kind of manipulating everything will be right. not manipulating like it was won't have any kind of power and it'll i think the difference will be amazing it'll be a lot lot more of a, the paradise it was meant to be here maybe yeah like the information that i get on galactic or extraterrestrial disclosure it's it basically hasn't even really started yet i think some like some of us have woken up really fast but the cabal has to be taken out and dismantled before even humanity is ready for that information. So I think it's just a process. And also it's a protection thing because they, the darkness attacks the light workers and the cabal like can physically attack, you know, and harm the incarnated extraterrestrials. So I think it's, there's going to be a lot more of us coming out. It's just, there's a divine, there's a divine plan I don't know exactly the plan, but I'm told that it's, you know, it's very exciting and basically not to be cheesy, but the best is yet to come as far as that goes. And I had a thought about clones too. Uh, if the person, like the real person, like just for example, like Gwen Stefani is taken out and replaced, if she was manufactured in a facility if that body was manufactured in a facility it's not really her anymore it's property of the company that created her right so is that so do does the the good guys does the navy or the letter 17 have to dismantle those businesses or the people running those businesses in order to take out those replacements or those clones because technically they were created by some it's almost like because I have a nursing background, if someone signs over their organs to a company, or if you create a clone, like a horse clone or a dog clone, like you're created by something and then they own you. Does that make sense? So I'm just wondering, like, if that's part that could be another piece to the puzzle is dismantling the companies. I feel like it already started. Again, and I think a lot of things have already started. I keep yeah, getting yeah. things are going on, but we just we just don't see them out in the open. And uh, here we've got that they've already started placing those infant souls and taking over those companies. And they're using how they find them and how they're doing it is they're using other dimensional uh, or uh, I guess extraterrestrial. Um, what is that called? Technology. Yeah. So they're, they're utilizing technology that's beyond sort of what we might literally know about here. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I think I did a video with Valnick like a couple months on, on that too. So yeah, I mean, it probably has been going on behind the scenes. So we, can we look at the cards, Janine, and see, can the clones, so if we're at say 40% population of the earth right now are clones, does that mean all the clones were they were they copies of someone that was living or is the living person around and then i've got another part to that question as well so i know how would how would you phrase that is there a percentage of people that are living basically you know when i don't know if, if you've heard this but some people i've heard it in kind of in the ether that there's maybe six or seven doppelgangers of most people around the earth because yeah, they're, they're just... so, you, you won't find it you know I got the weirdest uh, download just when you said that. Okay. So okay. I just got to share it because it came in. Yeah. in the middle of this, yeah. I got to say it. Uh, and not, none of this I've thought of intellectually. This is how I, I work. And I'm sure Megan can relate to this being intuitive and getting downloads and all of that stuff that we both do in different ways. But um, I, I just dropped in my head that, because I was like, how can these like I was thinking of family members that uh, fit, fit the bill of what could be cloned. Well, that, but they were birthed in the family. Everybody saw that happen. Okay. So I got right away. I got, they will put, 
they will have that clone birth or they they somehow fudge it so um, a clone births out of a human does that make any sense that sounds wow. horrifying like someone who's born without a soul Basically. Yeah, like they're born. So they have a way it looks like. And don't forget that the bad guys all these years, they've been working on stuff, right? And they have just as much of the bad AI technology as the good guys have good AI technology or the off-worlders or the other other dimensionals or however it works. So we're, we got this battle going on spiritually. So it may not be literally technical, like in my mind, I thought, oh, that that sounds horrifying. They did something to my mom when, and put this uh, clone in her. No, I don't think it goes like that. I think it it's literally something more. Uh, they're using really advanced technology, so maybe stealing the uh, the souls before the birth, like uh, tampering with them, making it unavailable to come to download into the physical body. Because my feeling was always just before the birth the soul comes in. Yeah. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's always what I felt. And that doesn't, that's not any kind of comment about, um, I like agree I'm not with making you. political comments or anything. I'm just saying, that's what I always felt. Sorry, go ahead, Megan. No, I totally agree. Like right before the baby is born, it's like the a portal opens up and the soul moves into yeah. the physical body. So yeah. it is possible that the, evil extraterrestrial beings have messed with the portals or guarded certain portals or messed with the incarnation. Uh, there is, there was something and David Ike, I believe has mentioned this before. This is a real thing. The reptilian reincarnation matrix machine, and it was on the moon and the reptilians would manipulate which souls would go into a body. And they would do experiments like abduct abduct people and then put an etheric implant into the soul. And it's like a magnetic frequency. So when the person passed away, the soul would be magnetically drawn into this machine and then they would put the souls in different bodies. And that's sometimes what can cause like gender confusion and stuff like that. So they mm. have been able, and it's been dismantled, but they have been able to manipulate us beyond the veil too. So yeah, I agree with that. And then there's also like when people are traumatized, they create a different personality and they step away from the soul because it's too painful or they hide their inner child. So it's basically just like an ego personality. And then they're not, and they're completely disconnected from who they really are. And that's where you can see like the same type of programming, like narcissists and stuff like that. Um, so I think they can present like a soulless person and a narcissist will mm. present the same way, like same behavior, because it's just driven off the ego mind and an ego personality. Wow. Tom, did you think this uh, conversation would go? <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's, it's very fascinating. So I'm really thinking, <clears throat> so are we saying then with that in terms of the downloads you just got, Janine? So if the if the soul is blocked and something else is put in or an absence of something put in or a, or a control bit from the other side, so that would they would actually be physically being birthed into that physical human tabernacle. It would be a flesh. It would be birthed from a, from a woman's womb so it would be a, an organic baby but the actual consciousness the god spark is not there it's different it's not the actual soul it's something else which is why i was getting in the first one that it, we could be talking about those non-players ah. that's what maybe creates that many non-players like uh who uh -huh. was uh, who always dolores cannon talked about the non-players i didn't had never heard about it until like she she was talking about it one of her books uh, so there's all these non-players how did there get to be that many non-players i think we're on to it i think we're on to how they do it huh yeah. so they're not so there's clones producing factories but there's also this element of maybe vast numbers of of uh of humans being born but they don't have a soul per se they're, or they don't have ability to to, to go online with the soul. So the soul got blocked somehow. Mm. 
Wow. But I, I don't think that's still happening, though. But, but okay. should we ask? Let's ask. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't want that to still be happening, but let's have a look. That might be why it's 60-40 instead of 50-50, like you said. Yeah, ended. It's ended. Okay. And that's been switched. So very recently, though, because that's that tense. So that just ended not too long. I don't know in spirit world what not too long ago means exactly, but you guys got to remember, right? We're pulling cards. So the universe is talking and it's an eternal energy. Okay. So I don't think there's any time in the universe. So that's why it gets confusing, but let's just say, uh, I'd say in the last 10 years, that's been ended, but it could be even like the last three years, but certainly it's, it looks like it ended and we've got another 10. So they're quickly trying to make up energy, find the soul, uh, find a soul for those entities. So this is fascinating. This is like, wow. I, I think, I think this is, um, we can even see it. Like when you, some people say they get a walk-in, I wonder if that's what's really yeah. happening. When people get a walk-in, maybe they just got a soul walked into them. Mm. Can we look further on that? Um, so you were saying it's ended recently. How long has this been going on for? Is this since kind of the beginning of time or is it since Roswell or is it, you know, since, is it more recent? Is it, is it millennia? Is it hundreds of years? Is it thousands? Is it millions of years? How, how long has that been going on for on the earth plane? Mm, uh, beginning of time, maybe. They've been okay. messing. So time doesn't work the way we think it does. Keep that in mind. But let's say uh, since they started manipulating things, they being, you know, the dark hats, we'll call them mm -hmm. the dark hats because you're on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll call them the dark hats. So these are two major arcanas. And I said to myself, just as we were asking the question, if major arcanas come up, it occurred to me that that would mean uh, time beginning. And then of course we got one of the most ancient soul cards. Okay. So since time beginning, They've right. been messing with us, whatever that is. So on the earth plane, uh, what we measure time as from the beginning. So that a really long time they were okay. messing with us, a really long time. And it would make sense if they had a lot of those non-players. Think about it, the dark ages, how unconscious people were. Think about the dark ages and they're just mm -hmm. lopping people's head off because they didn't have a baby boy for them. And they're not, like the stuff they were doing that makes no sense to anybody with a soul. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what, what's going on there? And, and then even Jesus coming on the scene. So whoever he really was in that real name or she, maybe it was a, she, we don't know, but the entity energy of, I believe there was an energy of what people call the Christ consciousness came. So uh -huh. somehow in that probably from uh, um, other dimensionals. So I, I believe Jesus or the person they call it, Jesus or that Christ consciousness came through, I believe, other dimensional energy. That's my belief. Everything I've been hearing, I'm just trying to piece it all together. I don't think, I don't think it came the way the Bible says it did. Although the, some of the Bibles probably got uh, some good info. It's just been manipulated anyway. So uh, I believe maybe they were trying to correct it then. And that was the beginning of trying to correct it. Right. So all of a sudden, a lot more people got, so the, he brought, or that en energy or that Christ consciousness brought a lot more availability to uh, compassion and love. Uh -huh. Think about it. And why, why could they were so brutal to children? Think about people yeah. would let their kids go work in factories from the minute they could like three years old and four in London, England, uh, and places in the UK, they had their kids in factories. I would never, ever do that to my child. Who would do that? And children seemed like second thought, like they were busy feeding the adults first and the kids got the scraps. It's completely switched around. We're looking after our kids. How, how come things are so different? Christmas used to be about adults, not about, not that I, I believe Christmas is um, pretty much demonic, but 
never mind, like the good people practicing it, even 150 years ago, it was more about adults. Then it got switched over just out of advertising about Santa Claus. Okay, whatever. Uh, right. Now the focus was on children. They actually bought kids presents. Okay, 150 years ago, they weren't doing that. So what happened to humans? What the heck's been going on? Our uh, whole history is complete mystery and we're just piecing it together. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. interesting. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it's interesting, your theory on Jesus, because he said a lot of good things, but then I agree, it's been manipul manipulated. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Whoever believes in me shall have eternal life. So whoever believes, and he said we are made in the likeness and image of God, which means we are God. So if we believe in what he's saying, or we believe in ourselves, we will have eternal life. So maybe he, that kind of, kind of fits with what you said. Mm -hmm. But I try not to get too hung up. Earth, I consider like an earth an experiment. So for many, many years, there's been maybe off world visitors here and there, maybe messing with our genetics for good, some for bad. And then we've taken stories and to the way that we understand them and continue to repeat those stories. And it's like playing telephone. So a lot of different truthers or people in the ET community say different things, but it's important the lesson behind it, not necessarily the idol like Jesus Christ or anybody else. So I like I like Jesus's real message, but I don't get hung up on Jesus like the person, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yep. Like you were saying, Janine, about, about the Christ consciousness and Jesus, whoever or whatever, however Jesus manifested or came, um, was bringing light and trying to change those dark ages. But the interesting thing about it in terms of the numbers is the word Jesus equals 74. The word energy equals 74. The word tarot equals 74. And the word gematria, which are the numbers, equals 74. So wow. I think... I think we're onto something there with the energy and Jesus and uh, and the Christ consciousness. Um, I've got another couple of questions in regards to the clones before we switch topics. Um, can can the factory clones can they reproduce as as you know normal male and females would? And um, and then I've got a second question to that. So can say it again. Can that so that it's the factory clones, the ones that you know, actual factory clones, can they reproduce in the normal okay. way that humans do? Okay. Or does a stork come along and deliver a baby, you know, for them <laughs> in another way? Uh, no, they can't reproduce. Uh, this okay. looks like so they stay safe from. Uh, there's so, something, a barrier blocking them. This is usually a really good card. Uh, mm -hmm. but it's like a safety position, a position of safety and looking yeah. at that, but not being able to, they're not going out and doing it yet. So then it, then it's badly aspected. So for people that are learning tarot, just so they know, now we badly aspect that one. So now the negative response to that is they're blocked from it. They're blocked from it They're They can look at it, but they don't get to do it. Uh, that would be too hard for them. This card makes it really hard. So no, they can't do it. Uh, and yeah. The other part of that question is, this might be controversial, but hey, let's ask it. Do we have any clones amongst us in the truther movement, i.e. ones that you know, put out truther material? Well, there's so many uh, truthers that we don't eat. Like I listen to a handful uh, but there's so many yeah. that would call themselves truthers. Let's talk about the main ones that a lot of people are viewing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Let's because uh, like yeah. there's some with 15 viewers, you know what I mean? And they haven't built yeah. up yet. They could be calling tr themselves truthers. People that we would probably have heard Prominent of. Prominent ones know, that and, people and, watching, yeah, yeah. that have, we've yeah. been on yeah. channels with and yeah. maybe, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Known amongst us to now. Um, our, uh, our mm -hmm. groups, yeah. Uh, no, I'm getting a no. I'm getting a good. no. Yeah, a no. Uh, it's karmically uh, not meant to be that they're in. They didn't get, they tried though. Uh, 
So there's been a lot of trying to in, invade the, uh, and a lot of people that uh, continually put down truthers from the outside, they're the ones that are, some of those are clones. Okay. So find find people that are always smack talking all the truthers. Mm. I can think of a few right off the top of my head. Yeah. So yeah. the ones that make their whole platform about tearing down truthers and still call themselves truthers, that's who you're, that's your clones there. There's your clones. Got it. That makes sense. That, that does make sense. Wow. It clones. Make, it makes um, sense. I was going to say it makes sense. Like when we talk about gang stalking or one person like targeting, uh, like encouraging a group of people to target one person, that's gang stalking. And a lot of the C the CIA does that actually. <laughs> so it makes a lot of sense. What the, the cards say is using someone who's a victim of mind control or maybe a clone that encourages a group of people or a following to target one person and spread negative information or harassment. So that's actually like when people look at who a targeted individual is or a victim of gang stalking, it's the CIA that uses people to do that. Uh, interesting. All right, ladies. Well, I wanted to switch topics. So something that uh, Juan mentioned on the last show I did with him. It's the one that you probably were one of the ones that uh, the, the story you broke, Janine, um, about the the uh, Scotus case. So the last show I did with him last week, he he mentioned a phrase, and I've never heard this before. But he he dropped it, and he wanted me to to pick it up. Well, he wanted the audience to hear it, but he definitely wanted me to to be aware of it. And then I asked him about it, and then he just said, "I'm not for now, another time." But he he put it there. He dropped the mic. Yeah. Clank, it was there. So I wanted to ask about this. I've I've got a few thoughts on it. He mentioned a society called the White Dove Society. And I don't know if either of you have heard of it, but I wanted to look at the cards and see what it is. I believe, my feeling is that we'll learn more about this in time, but maybe some of us know a lot more about it than I do. I've had some thoughts and insights on it since, um, but one just put it out there. And then I asked him about it. I said, did you say the White Dove Society? And I said, what, what and who are they? He said, oh, not, not for now. And then, you know, we carried on, but he put it out there. So I'm wondering if we can get some insight into who and what are the White Dove Society. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of truth around when we say the White Dove Society. And the card that came up for it as an archetype mm. is the Queen of Swords. Now, she brutally um, uh, brings out the truth. So she doesn't mince words about it. He's a little more fair. He's in the middle. So it could appear like a fair um, judgment, but she's not fair. So that's interesting. It might have both elements involved where you get the brutal truth and a more fair version of the truth. And then we've got the page of cups, whoops, the page of cups. So there's a, a yes in it, a yes. So yes, it's fair, uh, but it can also be brutal. So I'll say it can be both of these things. So it's a society that uh, sometimes uses tact and decorum like he does to tell the tr truth at uh, integrity, but, or sometimes can be brutal depending on what they need. Okay, so that's interesting. In the past, it's been hesitant to come forward. Mm -hmm. So it might be a society that'll be more used going forward. And it's been secretly uh, working in the background. Uh, be, uh, but it's coming more to the foreground because this is in the now. So it's coming out more. And this is a page. So just beginning to come out. Okay, and they're going to strategically use it or the findings of it. They're going to strategically use it going forward to make our world better. So it might become more involved in the betterment of the world going into the future. And I get there's uh, other dimensionals involved in it, in the society, as well as so they work together with uh, humans living on the earth and mm -hmm. this dimension and other dimensionals or what people call extraterrestrials, which really just means from a different land or place. Mm -hmm. other terrestrial so we don't know how the 
earth is actually, I personally can't say for sure now. I don't know. Is it a round ball? I don't think it is actually. It's probably that interesting shape that starts with the T and I can never say it. Toroidal. Yeah, toroidal. toroidal yeah, I, that's what yeah. I think it really is. But so it's, it's a lot more uh, complicated than that. But anyway, so people that don't live on in the same places us sort of with it are also involved so i feel like they they there's three different energies working together to find truth and we're going to see more about it that's what i get thank you so i've i've been looking at this since he mentioned it and i think well it's uh, i'll just ask the question so is tesla part of this white dove society Yeah, he's one of them. He's one energy. I think Tesla is a hybrid or is a hybrid. If uh -huh. He's still energetically not left or whatever. I think he's a hybrid. So it looks like he's <clears throat> involved and would be maybe more on the side of the brutal truth. Okay. And uh, also Trump. Trump's done the famous picture probably when he was in his early, well, mid thirties and he's holding the doves. Um, Okay, that's not to be, uh, we're not going to talk about that just yet. Okay. That wants to stay hidden, wants to stay hidden. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. I think you've put it out, though, that, you know, it's got the picture. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. Um, I guess I can say the numbers on it and let people think. But um, so if you do White Dove Society, White Dove is 111 perfection. Uh, it's also illusion for magic, but good magic. And you've always got doves. Dove has always been a biblical thing and throughout many, I'm sure it's in the, the tarot cards. And um, it's always a symbol of peace. You've got the thousand years of peace, but there's also doves attached to, to magic. Um, and there's good, bad, there's, you know, there's dark magic, there's good magic. Um, magic is 33, which is Don as well. Um, but a uh, magician is at 57 Tesla. Um, but if you do White Dove Society, Society is 96, White Dove is 111, that comes to 207. 207 is Nikola Tesla plus Trump, so 119 plus 88 Trump. So I feel they're probably both in it. How about Junior? Can we look at Junior? Is Junior part of White Dove Society? Is he kind of pulling the strings in that, that right now? <laughs> not going to tell us okay maybe they can't be named specifically right now okay for some reason for safety maybe or okay um i know but I, I i sense we'll get the same answer i wanted to ask about diana is she part of the white dust society so maybe they don't want us to ask i don't know but one put it out there so he's wanting us to kind of start the conversation You got a soft yes on that one. There's more to it. I mean, there's more to it because people think she's passed over and I don't think she has. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So, yeah. yeah. And we've got the fool. So I think this is like things that are going to come out later that are going to be wild. The fool sort of the wild card. She's a wild card in this for sure. <laughs> if yeah. they all of a sudden pull her out, but it's more willing to say yes to her than the, those other live, uh, people that we literally know, know are walking around. Okay. I, I had a weird, I had a weird white dove experience. I was, did you, I think I should uh, tell the story. Yeah. It, like yeah. I was driving about might've been eight months ago. I was driving down a street and I, I'm funny because I have a, 
Mars in Cancer, so astrologically Mars, motivating life force energy in Cancer, which is maybe why some people find me comforting or whatever. Um, and but it, they also Mars in Cancer, if you know astrology, that we love houses and homes, and I have a big habit of loving to look at how other people decorate. I even like looking in their windows. Not I don't literally go right up to their house, but just driving by and looking at houses and trying to feel if that would be a nice place to live or whatever, which might sound crazy to some people, but I've been doing it my whole life. So I I fall in love with certain houses. There's several houses that I like to drive by and just look at. And I believe they hold energy buildings. And I send love to ones that feel like they haven't been looked after. I'm totally weird about it. Anyway, so I was driving, looking at houses on my favorite, one of my favorite old streets with big old trees. And um, even though it's, you know, uh, a strange thing to do. I do it all the time, like I said. And all of a sudden, a what I thought was a <clears throat> pigeon at first, and it could have been because doves look like pigeons, only they're pure white. Uh-huh. Okay, so it had the shape of a pigeon. So I'm thinking pigeon, but it was pure white. Uh-huh. And it flew. And there's we don't have doves that I know of in Cal- Calgary. That's probably why I went, well, that must be a pigeon, but it's pure white. Anyway, and it flew and uh, made me stop. Like I literally had to stop my vehicle and it was, it flew right in front and sat on the road and just sat there. And I literally just had to stop. So I looked at the houses on either side to say, is it trying to tell me something about one of these houses? That didn't feel like this, what it was trying to tell me. And I just tried to understand what it was trying to tell me. And I, I never did. I just wasn't getting it. Until just now when you're talking about it, it's really interesting. It was a white dove. And I was like, what on earth is that white dove doing in the middle of Calgary? It was the weirdest thing. I don't think anyway. Say again, Meg. I said, I don't think I've ever seen a dove like in person, you know, so that's super rare. It feels Mm -hmm. like maybe you were supposed to slow down and enjoy your peace or a peace like trying to get you to pay attention to enjoy peace or take time to rest or something like that. Uh, I like it. Yeah. I'll take that. (laughs) Another thing that's just come up with that when you were talking about your experience Mm -hmm. with the dove. So um, you'll know from Christmas carols, there's the thing of turtle doves. And if I've spelt turtle right, I'll ask, I haven't got Wi-Fi on on this device here, but turtle, T-U-R-T-L-E, would that be right for turtle? all as in turtle doves that sounds like turtle to me yeah so turtle and i actually saw some great turtles in hawaii just last month so but they come out on the beach but turtle actually comes to 96 which comes to the word society so you've got white dove society and you've also got turtle white dove so they're the same value and if you do turtle dove this is interesting so if you do turtle dove so 96 plus 46 46 is best uh, 46. Think on this. So JFK was age 46 in 1963 when he when he passed over, got swapped out. Um, and uh, President Trump was born in 1946. Um, officially, 1946. Um, 46 is atomic number for palladium, which is one of the precious metals. And we're in a movie, you know, palladium, a performance, a show. Um, But if you do turtle dove, so 96 plus 46, that comes to 142, which comes to I am Nikola Tesla. Um, I am redemption. Um, I am foundation. So that's an interesting one. Um, Final question on white dove society. Um, Are they embedded or working with Q stroke alliance? I feel like they are, but let's have a look. Or did they create Q? I don't know if that. We'll see. See what you feel and see what the cards bring up. Jenny. Uh, they sit on some kind of diplomatic board and take action when asked. So I think they. Okay. So two major arcanas. This can be about diplomacy and uh, governments or governing systems, but in a fair, good way, especially if it's well aspected, which it is. And so they sit in a governing sort of overseeing. So I think they're connected. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. 
would it be fair to assume well i don't know because we don't know what it is but we're looking at it would they be some kind of almost a, an, an antidote to um illuminati you know secret handshakes those sort of things are they kind of the antithesis of that because it would make that. sense if that sorry johnny how would i uh put that in a question um are they the reverse? Are they the antimatter to things like the cabal? Are they? So you've got the secret society. You've had things throughout the past, you know, working okay. against man, mankind, and humanity. Okay, I've got always it. Felt there yeah, must be it. a polar opposite of it, you know. Okay, I get it now. Because it, it's important to get, and Megan, you'll know what I'm talking about, right? When you're working with people, it's so important to get the right question. So. Yes. Our cards will take you over here if you even it, leave it yeah, open. I, I was even thinking when we asked the truther question, if there's any clones in the truther movement, well, what if they're posing as truthers? They're not really truthers. Like then you could get a different answer. Yeah, that that's true. Yeah. That's true. Like maybe they're not, the universe doesn't consider them to be telling yeah. the truth. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good one. Good yeah. one. Okay. Good People point. posing as truthers would have been a better one. Okay, so Knight of Wands, and so are they the polar opposite? Well, well, let's say they align with, or they're more along the lines of a good military, or so they're more along that. So they they're there to help if they need, but I wouldn't put them. There no major arcana cards here. I wouldn't give them that much clout to be literally the. Uh, exact opposite of that would give them a lot of spiritual clout okay so i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say they're less than that not to say they're a minor but they're less than that and i think there's much bigger like there's the the hermit card could have come up the star yeah, yeah. card those those have been my big hitters very spiritually uh, doing the opposite of what those other um dark dark hats are doing so they're not that they're not that uh powerful as that no is there something that powerful opposing the dark side is there is there a group of or yes. is it just you know, us of, of course yeah <laughs> awakened humans yeah. <laughs> yeah they can't uh yeah. that's why they want our loosh as people call it i guess i better not say that word again yeah but that's yeah. why they want that i guess and um uh because they need us to be in the low vibration because when we're in a high vibration, like I got to be honest, like people write me really fearful things all the time. And I'm like, OK, that I, I hate to sound like uh, flippant or whatever, but I, I almost get a kick out of it. It's like, seriously, like yeah. you really think you could be that devastated. You you believe that you will be. Like, mm. I don't even it doesn't even. I yeah, learned a yeah. long time ago from life's lessons that the more I dwell in feeling bad for myself, the worse it gets. So I just learned mm -hmm. you got to learn and everybody's learning it to stop going to the most worst case scenario and throwing everything out, you know, to be true, just because somebody over here said, really, how about mm -hmm. Uh, align with what you I couldn't care less what anyone says even if they're the most trusted in all of the uh, supposed truth or community and or if supposedly Jesus himself knocked on my door okay because my soul knows better than any of that and I've uh, mm -hmm. enlightened it or I not enlightened it, but I've lit it up and allowed it to speak directly to me and that's what we all have to do and yeah. that connection is the spark that knows who's telling the truth, who's not telling the truth. I just check in with that. And it's not to say I always check in. And if I forget to, I get let off the path. But when I check in, that's when I'm mm -hmm. on the path. Yeah. And we all have, to, we can all do that. We all need to do it. It goes mm -hmm. back to like the ego mind. And I posted this like Operation Mockingbird is we're literally parroting information, fearful information through the ego mind and through the subconscious. Yeah. And so we have, maybe we have parrots and then we have doves. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I agree, Megan. And it, I, I've even been, I probably got a bad reputation, but for emailing back sort of really curt 
like stop being fearful, blah, blah, blah. And I can be really like, now, like, so I apologize to anyone that got one of those emails because it's, it's literally like hundreds of them can come in in a day and it's just like, okay, seriously. A lot of, it's, uh, like, it's, yeah. like a disease. it's almost like a disease. And you talk about coronavirus. Yeah. I think Corona means crown. So it's yeah. literally yeah. like a fear disease and Brain. like my higher self and my soul is just as powerful as the galactic federation of whoever. But whenever I give Intel or information on behalf of Valnik, he always, it's almost boring to keep repeating this, but he always says, do not consent to fear. Do not mm-hmm. give your power away. Like listen to your yeah. heart. It's the same thing over and over again. And, yeah. um, it, but it's true. It works. If you do it, it really, it works. And then things don't really bother you as much. You know? So you start creating uh-huh. your own reality, even within this matrix. Uh, I created uh, a really great life for myself, but it wasn't always like that. It took me 50 years to figure it out. And then by the last 10, I've been figuring it out. The last 11, I've figured it out finally. And it is the most freeing thing nobody's ever going to enslave me and i'm not getting their illnesses and diseases they can stop it do you know what Uh i mean it's not happening and i decided not to and i remember when it felt like i was being chased by that very supposed virus uh or whatever i think it's an energy i don't believe there are viruses and a lot of people will back Uh me up on that actually okay i don't buy into any of that so i remember literally feeling like i was going to get taken down by it and i was like uh nope not doing it and i just put a big boundary up and i had to do it for about four days in a row every morning it would start creeping over and i was like no way and I chased it away. And I believe we can do that. I, I believe we have the ability to do all these things. You got to actually believe it, though. Uh, otherwise, you don't, you, you're not utilizing what you have. Yeah, vir- viruses need a host to survive. So they actually don't really exist unless they have a life force to replicate within. So I think that viruses are actually they represent a demonic entity. It's something that's the void. It doesn't really exist unless it can hijack another person, unless it can take another person's life force and then replicate that energy. So I think when you look at all of this stuff and even the gematria of everything, it's very symbolic of all the stuff that we've gone through over the past few years. And I never got, knock on wood, have never gotten it ever. And I worked before it was a big thing, before it was COVID, I was taking care of sick patients like that, and I never got it. So just, you know, keep your vibe high, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And to answer your question, uh, Tom, uh, so this is what's the opposite of, and that just makes sense. Okay, so our future selves, so that tells me we're on the right track, Megan, our future selves would know that about themselves. So they've already done the work. So the more evolved parts of ourselves are so the, the, this is like the galactic helpers that's what we're calling uh-huh. them right but that's our own knowledge that we already we are we are the galactic helpers okay we just have to catch up to ourselves okay and then this is the earth goddess and or otherwise known i think of it as the universe because we live on a universe but it physically feels like a physical thing so she's like the goddess so the thing that allows things to grow the thing that allows uh, uh women to become pregnant and birth the thing that allows uh you know men to help women become pregnant and birth we can't do it without each other men and women like this is all of nature that um uh, so the nature energy of the world so that's why going out in nature is a really good way to heal yourself from negative thinking heal yourself from being depressed heal yourself from even literal diseases Uh, if we learn how to use it properly, all of that kind of stuff. So this is the energies that coexist with uh, the dark ones that are their equal. And I think, well, we're winning. So it's our turn, the wheels turning, and we're taking the top top row for a thousand years, at least anyway. Makes more sense on where we go when we go all. It's like we're all, because human is 57 Tesla. Um, So it's like Tesla technologies, medical beds you know all those all those patterns is it us is it all of us as humans being activated and being this this kind of consciousness this this grid of consciousness you know 
And maybe that is why us as truthers are spread out around the globe in different areas. Maybe we activate certain areas and maybe even when we travel, I felt this, I'm sure you have, Janine, when doing tour things, it feels like we were supposed to have been at that point in time for a moment, however long it was, but it felt like we did. So I had, you know, I, I had my journey and then I came off and went back up again and, and I met with everyone, but I needed, to, so things like Mount Rushmore, Devil's Tower, I needed to go to those places. It felt important for me to accomplish parts of a mission, whatever it was. And I got certain numbers and decodes on there. Um, but other places as well, just felt like I was supposed to have been in certain places at a certain point. And it's like we're almost activating our uh, our light. Maybe the DNA changes when we go through those places, and I think it allows. I think as a ripple effect in the, in the universe, in the in the network of, of of humanity, of the of the group mind of the of the hive mind, if that's the correct term to use. But I think it. I think all the work that we do in the locations we're in and the places we go, I think it does have a ripple effect upon the big board. It's like. Um, Othello, you know, when you've got, you've got all the counters, they're black and white, and you either win by turning them all black or turning them all white. It's like each, each, each place we go, each piece of work we do, each decode, each tarot read, each, each uh, intuitive download discussion with Valna, everything we put out is like a counter being turned over on the board. That's the way I feel about it. Mm. I like it. Yeah, so do I. And um, what do we think about? I know we did a bit, I think, on the last show, but this this case with SCOTUS, do you have any updates on that, Janine? Any other any other things that have come in and that kind of where it will go? Is it going to be the big thing that we expect or will it be another okay. piece? I'll just say what I got mm-hmm. yesterday when we were on with uh, Juan Osama, with Juan. John yeah. Claude, and Jay Snip. Um, uh, what I got was that, and I got it twice in the in the two and a half hour video <laughs> on Rumble. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot to get through. And the last like even forty minutes are really, I think, the part you got to listen to if you're going to choose uh, to pick yeah. any part. That part's really interesting. Anyway, but lots of good nuggets in there. Uh, but um, I got that. Something else will come and uh, before that. So something's going to come along that yeah. takes us somewhere else. And that might not become necessary, needed, or even a thing anymore. Something mm-hmm. else is coming that could be a little um, shocking that uh, changes everything. And um, it was the tower card, of course. And uh, it could uh, take us off that track and we won't even be noticing that. It'll be something else. But that that is necessary right now to to probably manipulate some other situation. So it's all meant Mm -hmm. to be, but it could be uh, just utilized as an energy, like a loaded gun, like uh, Juan O'Savin likes to call it, although I better not say that again. Uh, Right? So there's that. Like a water uh, pistol, yeah. A loaded yeah, water pistol. It's, yeah. It's definitely um a BB yeah, gun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you get around it, Megan? Have you looked into it at all? I have no I know, I have no idea. <laughs> I really I don't even I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> I haven't looked I haven't looked into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's basically a case that they think can um Maybe legally it may flip everything. That's kind of in a nutshell without going into the details of it. But uh, mm. um, yeah, I think Juan was even alluding to that a little bit in the in the show yesterday. You know, yeah, he was, I think, yeah. I think the mil like it's a military operation. So maybe if it did, it's just for show. You know what I mean? So mm, that's me. Just like yeah. my first question on it. You know? Yeah. A military operation is two, two, one thousand years of peace, yeah. and uh, military is quantum one oh seven. Um, wow. Okay. Aquarius one oh seven. Yeah. Trump's one oh seven. Superman currency. All of them one oh seven. What are you pulling there, Jenny? Let's have a look. Well, I just pull while you're talking. Hmm. And 
I'm getting that. So it's a valid thing. So okay. um, Megan, when you get off the show or in the next week or so, you might want to just have a little peek into it because it is really interesting. So these brothers brought uh, a lawsuit to the Supreme Court and it doesn't threaten to, because you can't, it doesn't threaten to dismantle the 2020, but it does, it does bring up that they didn't do due diligence even when a hundred and something, um, what are those guys called? Senate, Senate members. Senators, Congress. Yeah. Members of Congress. That's it. Brought it forward. So remember when all of those Congress members brought it forward, that there was something shenanigans and they needed to look into it and they, they should have taken 10, I think it was days to look into it. And that was legally what they were meant to do, but they totally just shuffled it. So they, they're bringing up a technicality, basically. And the funny thing about it is it went through all of the minor courts and got its way on the docket for January 6th. This is when the Supreme Court decided to look at it. January 6th. Okay, so but it sh- could have got thrown out on all of these levels, but it never did. So weird flukes and magic and or manipulation got it to a level it would have normally because they can ignore stuff like that they can and they do okay Uh, but this supreme court is actually agreeing to at least look at it january 6th and make a ruling whether they'll even take a further look at it do you know what i mean but all of that was almost a miracle that it got that far anyway and these four brothers the weird things about them is they've they're known to be trumpeters uh They all play trumpet and they were taught by their dad. He was a famous trumpeter and uh, they've been on Johnny Carson when they were young and blah, blah, blah. And they've, they've been all over social media for years and in on the scene uh, playing their trumpets. So it's kind of funny trumpeters, the, Uh you know, the trump card. uh, Also, you could think of it as like, there's no coincidences. You could think of it as uh, the judgment card with the trumpets. So how weird is that? <laughs> yeah. What's interesting too is Elon Musk was talking about election integrity or how Twitter interfered with. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say it because we're on. Never mind. Yeah. But, <laughs> but we know what you're talking about. We yeah. know the tweet. Yeah. 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 Good one. Yeah. When you were talking about the Supreme Court, Janine, in, in regards to this case, so Supreme Court, um, comes to 174 actually comes to megan rose nurse because nurse is 77 priced hurts uh uh matter vibrate um all the things of creation and that's what a nurse does it helps heal someone so anyway i thought i'd put that out but but um supreme court is 174 it's also um i caught the swamp 174 and it's also currency exchange and if you take your mind back to when President Trump and Melania came down the escalators in 2015 on June 16th, mm-hmm. when he was announcing his candidacy, that just above them is their sign in Trump Tower currency exchange. So they had a physical currency exchange there. And I've been to that tower twice. Interesting you talked about the tower card. I've been to Trump Tower twice um, in the last, I don't know, 14, 15 months. Um, last year, the sign was up. But apparently, I spoke to one of the kind of security guys. Apparently, the currency exchange wasn't operating back then. Um, but now, if you go there, that sign has been removed. It's not there anymore. But they have 17 flags in the foyer. So next to the, the bar and just above the Trump Grill, Trump Grill is 146, New, uh, New Jerusalem and Truth Social. They've owned Trump 146. But you've got... um. You've got 17 flags, you've got the Space Force flag, you've got the Coast Guard, you've got the Navy, um, you've got the Army, all of those things. Um, I think Navy, you definitely got the Army. But I'm wondering what came to my mind when you were talking about this thing with, with SCOTUS and Supreme Court and this possibility of something different. I'm wondering, I don't know what it is, but I think that sign's been taken down for a reason because it's also trust the plan. It's um, eye of the storm currency exchange it's supreme court it's i caught the swamp all of them are 174 and it's also president trump's twitter handle which is real donald trump so real donald trump is 174 as well but we know that's come back that's been restored but the currency exchange has been removed 
grouped in Trump Tower. I don't know what the answer to this is. I'm just wondering if we can look at it and see what's the reason for that sign, because it was the first piece of gematria that was shown in, in President Trump's running. So uh, there's a new beginning. Uh, and yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the three of wands. We've never been here before. It'll bring more independence financially to humans and less involvement with government and your in your abundance. Uh, yeah. So maybe a new system, a more independent of, say, the Fed system, which never was federal anyway, as, of course, Juan likes to point out, and I like to point out, lots of people like to point out, that is all just, uh, that's a liter literally um, um, a, a bit of a gangster Huckster. situation, yeah. situation. Uh, uh, you know, su supposed system that has nothing to do with government or it's it's literally like um somebody who lives somewhere else is collecting all your monies <laughs> yeah anyway yeah so there could be a change in the financial and the whole time you were talking i'm going to just say <laughs> this yeah, has been happening on. constantly my palms itchy and you know <laughs> what people say about that yeah something weird's going to happen with uh finances i mean i just can't ignore it but um we are running kind of late here for for me uh tom i hate to say it but i gotta uh, run yeah we'll, we'll say thank you and, and good night everyone yeah. but uh and also uh we did that on the last week i think with jerry so the one the, the hands for the itching the palms and, yes uh, yeah this is like it's, it's so obvious that i know it's a sign like yeah it is <laughs> something's right, going on it yeah. is can we just as a microsecond, can we just look, is there any connection to that sign coming down to Supreme Court as well? Because they're both the same numbers, 174 Supreme Court currency exchange. Is there a connection with that as well? Like maybe bringing the house down or something in the tower, the tower mm. card. Mm. That's a really unique card. It seems like it's it was a whole unique situation that maybe okay. has to do with other things in a different direction yeah because uh, that's a unique car like a unique change i think that's a stretch to say that i think that's okay. what that feels like so it's what more obvious to it's... that meg megan what do you get i don't know i think i think basically on a very high level everything's connected and yeah mm. but maybe not directly connected but on a high level everything mm -hmm. is and yeah. When you talk about gematria and the numbers matching, it might just be it's on the same frequency. So maybe like the frequency of source energy, the frequency of freedom, and maybe those things are vibrating at the yeah. same frequency, you know? Yeah. Mm. Pick up. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks, girls. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. And uh, just as a reminder, Janine, where can everyone find you again? tbj.com or beyond mystic also rumble um beyond mystic rumble channel on thursdays at four eastern and that's that's a live show and uh tbj you can get all my pay-per-views from tbj or go to the um academy beyond mystic academy and learn tarot <laughs> there you go learn tarot exactly thank you and uh and megan Yep, I'm um, Megan Rose on YouTube, and then I have a Patreon, Megan Rose Medium. So that's where Excellent. I am. Excellent. Thank you. Well, thanks, ladies. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, if you haven't already done so, everyone, do subscribe to the Tom Number Show and Slide Club, both on YouTube, and you'll see all the other social media like Telegram and Janine's got Telegram and Twitter, et cetera, and all of, the, all of those other places rumble. All right, everyone, God bless. Thank you, Janine. Thanks, Megan. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.